In April 2022, California police officers discovered a seven-foot still-living sturgeon in the back of a suspect's gray hatchback during a routine traffic stop. This help put an end to an illegal sturgeon poaching ring investigation in which 36 sturgeon were taken from the Sacramento River Valley. Although no one in the California sturgeon bust has been sentenced yet, it is expected that suspects will receive harsh sentences. So why are people going such great lengths to catch these prehistoric fish? The answer to this is that it's complicated. But in short, these individuals are going after their eggs, which can be turned into caviar and sold on the black market for extremely high prices. In this video, we will discuss both the legal and illegal caviar trade and why individuals risk it all to obtain this lucrative fish product. Hi everyone, welcome to Fish, Water, and Travel, where it is our goal to promote and educate topics related to freshwater fish, water science, and other recreational water-related pastimes. Like we said, we'll be talking about sturgeon today, but you can find us at fishwaterandtravel.com for similar articles and videos. Sturgeon are armored, dinosaur-looking fish that are known as living fossils. They are one of the oldest families known. Sturgeon can grow up to 10 to 20 feet long and live over 100 years. They are typically bottom feeders and predate on shellfish and other bottom fish. There are 27 species of sturgeon found globally, and many are threatened with extinction due to overfishing, pollution, and the caviar trade. Overfishing is a serious issue for sturgeon conservation. Overfishing implicitly reduces the amount of animals in an area, but in the case of sturgeon, this will reduce the number of sexually mature, egg-bearing females, which have a direct effect on the caviar trade. Also, it takes a sturgeon 6 to 25 years to reach sexual maturity, depending on the species. So, if all the mature female sturgeon are overfished out of an area, it could take up to 25 years before the next class of sturgeon reaches sexual reproduction, leaving the fishery unable to sustain itself. Caviar is the salted, unfertilized eggs of sturgeon. Caviar can be taken from sturgeon in many different ways. One method involves killing the fish before extracting the eggs. Another involves surgery, in which the eggs are removed but the fish is kept alive to reproduce again. The last method is called stripping, where eggs are pushed from an opening cut in the urogenital muscle. The eggs are then washed to remove impurities. Caviar is then made by salting the eggs based on traditional recipes and placing them in tins. Different sturgeon species can have distinct caviar types. Russian, beluga, and stellite sturgeon are common in the caviar trade. Species type typically plays into how expensive caviar will sell for, with the most expensive caviar typically coming from the oldest, most mature sturgeon. Here is a very brief world history of caviar. The trading of caviar has occurred for thousands of years through many countries and cultures. Evidence that the Egyptians ate sturgeon eggs with salt and vinegar has been found and dated to 24,000 BC. And the Russian culture has maintained one of the strongest relationships with caviar, which has remained since the Middle Ages. At one time, caviar was something that all social classes could afford to eat in Russia. Fishing occurred in the Caspian Sea, in which prized beluga sturgeon are found. However, when foreign trading of caviar began from Russia, it was thought that a Greek sea captain, Ionis Vivarchus, in the year 1780, helped promote the product to wealthy upper-class Europeans. This successful marketing gave caviar a luxury status to a new eager market of affluent customers. After the First World War, it was thought that the Soviets controlled up to 90% of the caviar production in the world. After the change in the communist rule of Russia, the caviar trade was privatized. Overfishing of sturgeon was thought to have heightened in the region during this time until a licensed type environmental reform was put on the fishery. 
Russia and other nearby countries of the Caspian Sea put strong measures to limit the harvest of wild fish and overfishing. However, the decline of sturgeon from this area continues. Today, the worldwide production of caviar is substantial despite declining sturgeon populations. It was reported that in 1998, the international trade of legal caviar was 220 tons and has declined somewhat since then. Unfortunately, the decline in production of caviar combined with sustained global demand has made caviar prices increase to thousands of dollars per pound in some varieties. These lucrative prices have also spurred on the illegal caviar trade. In response to reports of sturgeon and other species being pushed to extinction, 181 international governments signed the Convention on International Trade in Endangered Species cities, in 1998 to help limit the effect that trade had on species survival. In addition to conservation efforts, cities provide governmental oversight of the caviar imported into select countries. This has reduced the illegal caviar trade as well as counterfeiting caviar types. To help with counterfeiting, genetic testing of caviar can identify what species of sturgeon it came from and helps reduce the number of misrepresented samples on the market today. Counterfeiting of caviar is quite lucrative and a mislabeled tin could sell for thousands of dollars when it really is the eggs of a species worth hundreds of dollars less. In one study, genetic sequencing of 27 caviar tins found that only 10 samples matched the species that it was said to be labeled from. With stricter regulations and the increase in caviar prices, organized crime has made a presence in the caviar trade. Although it is certain that sturgeon poaching was performed throughout history before this increased regulations. Illegal smuggling from the Caspian Sea to Western European countries is documented with connections to organized crime. It has been reported that poachers will catch egg-filled sturgeon, process it into caviar, and the product would leave the Caspian Sea area via couriers traveling by car, plane, or train carrying 5 to 40 kilograms of eggs per trip. From 2001 to 2010 alone, the European Union confiscated 1.4 tons of caviar from smugglers. It should be noted that the Caspian Sea is not the only area where illegal sturgeon fishing occurs, as has been pointed out in the start of this video with the California poaching ring story. These stories seem like a one-off, but poaching sturgeon illegally is a continual process. In another sting, a group of poachers operated from 1985 to 1990 in the Pacific Northwest to harvest 2,000 adult sturgeon and over 3,000 pounds of caviar. This caviar was sold to a company in New Jersey via FedEx shipping. The caviar company then paid the poachers by mailing boxes of cash to Washington to a variety of P.O. boxes. The poachers were estimated to be paid $247,000 for their shipments of caviar to this company who mislabeled the product as imported beluga caviar that sold for $600 per pound. The International Union for Conservation of Nature reports that sturgeon are more critically endangered than any other group of species and has found that 85% of sturgeon are at risk of extinction. Conservation organizations like the World Wildlife Fund have made commitments to conserve sturgeon populations worldwide. As the conservation of this species is entwined with economic drivers, such as the caviar trade, treaties like cities and other intergovernmental initiatives are highly important. The World Wildlife Foundation has also noted four main steps to protecting sturgeon worldwide. Number one, stop the black market trade of caviar. Number two, engage with fishing communities for long-term sturgeon conservation. Number three, protect and restore vital sturgeon habitat. And number four, stop illegal sturgeon fishing. If you're interested in learning more about what you can do to protect sturgeon, please go to the World Wildlife Foundation website with a link found in the video description below.
Hi everyone, thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed this video, please hit like and subscribe. Also, if you have any recommendations about how we can make these videos better, please let us know in the comment section below. You can find more videos and articles such as this on our website, fishwaterandtravel.com.